Hey guys, it's day 28 of my consistent everyday reading. It's gonna be one month very, very soon. And let's continue our journey. Today is chapter 8, sorry, 9 and 9, right? Ella felt as if she had been riding for hours. She twisted her, her, her arm to look at her watch. It had been only 25 minutes. She couldn't believe it. Her legs were so tired that they felt as if they belonged to someone else. They didn't seem to be con connected to her body. They went round and round and round all by themselves. And she was seeing things. She didn't dare take her eyes off in the red tail lights for the moment for a moment it was amazing that she had been able to keep up with the car she had lost it for a few times but somehow she had pushed her legs to go faster and them and then the red lights had been had appeared again floating in the distance she was lucky the road was mostly flat but she wondered how long she could keep reading, writing like this. Suddenly the tail lights disappeared again, but this time Ella could see the headlights shining on the bushes on the left side of the road because the car was turning left. Ella slowed down. The road had been fairly straight all the way. If the Hogans were turning left, they were going towards the beach. Then the lights of the car disappeared completely. Had it stopped or had it lost or had she lost it? Where had it turned off the lights? Where had it turned off the light of the road? She got off the bike and walked with it. Her legs were shaking, but it was good to stop riding. It was hard to see anything in the dark. Where was the car? Had the Hogans really realized she was following them? Were they suddenly going to jump out of the bushes at her? Ella remembered the knife she had been she had seen in Bob's hand. Her legs trembled even more. Then she suddenly came to a dirt track going off the road of the left. Then she suddenly came to a dirt track going off to the left. The car must have gone down there. She could feel that the track was very low. It would be useless to take the bike down there. She pushed it, she pushed it to the side of the track and hid it behind some bushes. In the weak light, of the moon she started walking. She hadn't gone far with when she saw the car. She stopped. There were no lights and no movement. Were the Hogans in there? It didn't seem as if they were, but she didn't want to pass too closely to the car. She crept through the low bushes at the side of the track and went around the car. She kneeled, she knelt behind a bush and looked at the front of the car. It was all dark and quiet. She walked through the bushes a bit more and then joined the track again. Now she could hear the ocean. The track ended at, at a white beach. It was hard to see properly in the dark, but there seemed, seemed to be an old jetty that didn't even reach the water. And lying on the sand next to it, there was a boat. Was Jenny in there? A light suddenly moved across a window in the side of the boat. Someone, someone was in there. Was it the Hogans? Ella had to find out. 
she wasn't going to give up now. Softly, she ran across the sand towards the board. When she reached, when she reached it, she knelt, knelt beside it on the wet sand. She knelt beside on the wet sand. It was a very old boat. Bits of plan paint fell off where I attached it. The moving light stone through the window, the moving light stone shone, the moving light shone through the window and onto the sand for a moment. They are in there, thought Ella. I'm sure they are. She crept along the sand beside the boat until she was underneath the window. Then she slowly started to move up towards the corner of the window. She was getting closer and closer. She was almost there. A few more centimeters and suddenly a hand grabbed her shoulder roughly. Ella screamed and dropped to the ground. She put her hand up to her face as the light from the torch stone in her eyes. The hand grabbed her again and dragged her to her feet. Get up, girl, and keep your mouth mouth shut, said the voice behind her, be behind the torch. It was Bob. There was a noise from the top of the boat and another touch. Torch light disappeared. Get her up here quick, said Trish. Bob pushed Ella towards the jetty and dragged her up onto it. Please don't hurt me, said Ella. She was shaking. Shut your mouth, mouth, said the Bob and pushed her towards the board. Our little friend, said Trish, as Bob stepped onto the board and pulled Ella behind him. Get her downstairs, said Trish, and Ella was pushed down a ladder into the dark below. Into the dark below. The Hogans followed. Trish held the torch while Bob took some rope and tied Ella's hands together behind her back. Then he pushed her down onto a seat and tied her legs together. You thought you were so clever, didn't you? said Trish. Did your legs get tied? Tried? On that bike, she laughed. We nearly lost you a few times. We nearly lost you a few times, didn't we, Bob? Ella's mouth dropped open. They had, they had planned this. They known she was following them. It was a trap. Bob pulled the knot tight around Ella's legs. It hurt. And now you're trapped down here with your little friend, continued Trish. She swung the torch around and the light hit the face of another girl. A girl who was who also had her hands tied behind her back. A girl who looked very cold and tired and frightened. Jenny. Now, said Bob, moving to Jenny, I'm going to ask you again. Jenny began to cry. Bob put a hand on her leg. You don't need to be frightened. It's easy. Look. He waved his hand at, at Trish and she gave him something. He held it out to Jenny. It was a biscuit. Where is the necklace hidden, eh? You tell us and you can eat this biscuit. It's real simple. Tears were running down Jenny's face. She was silent. Come on, love, said Bob gently. Tell us and you can hear it and you can have something to eat. Tell us and it will all be over. He waited. 
Jenny spoke. Her voice was a whisper. In her bedroom, she said. It's in the pocket of a brown velvet coat. Bob looked up at Trish and smiled. I told you she should tell us, he said. He swung back to Jenny and pushed the biscuit into her mouth. Now you you had better be telling us the truth, said Bob. If you if you are then we'll phone someone at the end of the day and they will come and find you. If you aren't then you will be here for a long time, for a very long time, finished Trish. I'm telling the truth, cried Jenny. Good, said Bob. He grabbed his torch and said it said to Trish, Come on. The Hogan squimmed the steps to the desk. Have fun, girls, Trish called back down to them. Ella jumped as the heart Hatch fell shut. As the hatch fell shut, it was complete darkness. She heard the Hogans walk along the along the jetty, and then there was a silence. They had gone. Then Jenny's voice whispered in the dark, "Who are you?" All right, guys. Tomorrow.